this exhaust? So this is a 1975, right? Yeah, so it's a 1975 Rabbit, which is like the first full production year. Technically, they made some in 74, but they're extremely rare. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a 1975 Rabbit. It was a 1.5 four-speed um, carbureted. It's, a, it's what people call a swallowtail. Uh, people who know what that means that's know the, what that means. But that's the are, back, right? Yeah, that's the main signifier. Yeah. Um, but there is actually like a lot of differences. Uh, and when you build one of these, you find out that there's way more than you think. Yeah. But yeah, this is like the main yeah, the signifier. Right the there. Dip. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot. Like the hatch is different. The, the steering rack is different. The door hinges are different. Um, your dashboard is different. Your hood is different. Uh, like on the outside of the shell, it looks like a Marcon Rabbit, but a lot of the details are completely different. Your your fuel tank is different. Um, there's your fuel filler neck is different. Like now, a lot of those are like early Rabbits, not just swallowtail differences. Uh -huh. um, but some of them are are just swallowtail differences. So yeah, it's it's an interesting car to find parts for or, or, or work on because some of the excuse me some of the kits don't necessarily work for it um so well, more more valuable because it's rarer but actually a pain in the ass at times right <laughs> i'd like to think it's more valuable <laughs> but uh but that's what the market gets to decide that but yeah. i would like to think it's more valuable but uh yeah just a bunch of little things that are all different on it yeah i just um from a mark one perspective obviously i own a mark two uh -huh. but I've always just preferred to have like a 1980 or earlier because it's rounds. Right. Right? Yeah. yeah. So that's definitely a preference of many people. Yeah. Um, I think front rounds are, uh, single rounds are, are my favorite. For sure. Uh, and then uh, early Westies are my second favorite. And then late Westies. So, how long have you had this thing, Harold? Uh, I've had this for almost five years. And it's your like third Mark I, right? Uh, yeah, it's my yeah. third Mark I. Yeah, I had a Mark I GLI. Uh, coupe because we're in Canada and I can get a Mark 1 GLI. Andrew has it now. Yeah, Andrew has that now. Yeah. I had uh, an 84 late Westy. Um, uh, a guy in North York has that now. And then this. Yeah. And then this. Yeah. So you've had it for how long? Uh, about five years. Five years? Yeah, I think around 2018, I think is when I bought it. Yeah. yeah. And in the five years that you've owned it, what have you done to it? Um, so when I got it, it was in extremely good condition. Yeah. Uh, there were like nicks and scratches and dents. Paint wasn't perfect. Obviously, it's a 50 year old car. Yeah. Uh, but the engine blew up about two weeks after I got it on yep. the on the highway. It threw a rod through the piston. Uh, sorry, it threw a rod through the block. Um, so I put like just a little dirty 1.7 carb engine in it just to get me by. Um, but then recently I've done a VR6 swap, and then. Uh, so, uh, it was on coilovers. I just kind of like lowered it and then I put rims on it and then I started hunting for like missing pieces like chrome pieces, some chrome accents, things like that. Um, drilled and pushed in the bumpers. Um, when did all of this happen, dude? I just, I'm just noticing this now, yeah. but like what, how's it all like? Yeah, so that happened. Uh, the, the previous owner actually said that all of that happened. He had a tent set up on his driveway. Uh, and it was under the tent and then the wind picked it up and caught it and the really? leg of the tent scraped all the side of the vehicle so i've just never noticed all this stuff before yeah. probably because this is like the side of the car that i see the least right yeah yeah but like was your hood always this way yeah yeah so today i got it i think yeah. uh i personally like it um, yeah me too i mean yeah. it's not for everyone but we can talk about that too yeah, like yeah, how yeah. How we prefer our cars a little like damaged right yeah like i think my favorite part of the car is that that right there yeah that pushed in bumper i think it looks like a little beauty mark and uh yeah, i love it i never want to fix that yeah yeah you're one of those um people like me who are like to hell with like a 
a paint job, right? Well, I'll like, say this, like, don't get me wrong, if I had the oh. money laying around... But you want to restore I, it I, one yeah, day. I like yeah. them. I certainly yeah. like them, but for me, like, this kind of wear... Character. Yeah, it's like it took 50 years for somebody's hand to wear through that, that paint, right? Yeah, patina. Yeah. Yeah. And you got, you got all this stuff going on here, too. Yeah, that's from the missing chrome strip. Yeah. And FYI, shout out to anyone who's watching, if they have a missing rear chrome... Like a chrome strip for this car. I've been hunting one for years and cannot get it. There you go. Uh, Y'all heard it here first, man. If you guys have that missing chrome trip, uh, chrome trim for the uh, rear hatch, make sure to drop me a DM or like um, mention in the comments so I can tell Harold about it because he's not on any social media. No, I don't have any. Social media. <laughs> all right. So after after like accumulating all the chrome trim and like rocking the 1.7 liter for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, what and happened next? Time, well, like my first Volkswagen I ever owned was a Mark IV uh, GLX uh, VR6. Oh, Mark IV, yeah. so like, obviously I fell in love with the VR6 at that point, and, and like, so I wanted both of them combined. Yeah. So I went out and put them together, which like, this is an extremely common swap, so it's nothing special. Um, but it just changes the car. Yeah, it just it changes it entirely. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, Character drivability. Yeah, it's completely and utterly stock. Like, well, okay, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, <laughs> but like, it's not like built or anything like that. Um, like, I upgraded the ignition; it has cold air. But those are all just basic things that you do. Yeah. Like, I don't consider that like a built car. You can ignore the uh, the coolant system in the back. That's just functional right now. Mine's the same way. Yeah, that's I have just it functional. looped as well. Yeah. Well, actually, no, that's not looped. That's heat. But oh, like, that's heat. Uh, I bought the I mm. bought the conversion piece to give me heat, and it blew up on the first startup. Uh -huh. So I needed to just get it functional and not leaking, and so that's why I have so many clips there. Yeah. But um, other than that, it my, honestly runs and drives like a top. I've never had a single issue. Because my heater core went too, and right now it's just looped up. So yeah. What's uh what's the story with this header? Why is it all wrapped? Like is that an aftermarket header or? Yeah, so yeah. actually that's the Eurowise header. Oh, okay. Um, does it add ponies from the stock one? They say it does, but yeah. I've never done a dyno, so like I could never tell you. Yeah. Um, but that's the Eurowise header. It's I, I will I will say this, like I've I haven't had really any issues or any complaints about Eurowise whatsoever. Like there's a little bit of a mix up with the ordering, but that's like another story and that's not that big of a deal. Yeah. It eventually got solved. But since then, um, I basically bought everything from Eurowise that you could. Because I just wanted to do it. I didn't want... I'm not the type of person who cares about, like, oh, I did everything myself. Yeah. Um, Actually, you, got a, you had a lot of help with this car, didn't you? Uh, Slav and Andrew definitely helped yeah. me. Chris, Chris helped me a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, like, wiring. I think Slav was the biggest one with wiring. Yeah. Um, the other thing was, like, because it's a Swallowtail, the kits that were sold for this don't necessarily work. So, like, one example is, like, the Euro Eurowise has a hydraulic clutch kit that they sell for these, mm -hmm. um, but the Swallowtail steering column only has one mounting point, mm -hmm. not two, and so we had to make our own mounting point and weld it. Right. Uh, I'm not a welder, so obviously Andrew helped me with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Slav helped me with just kind of identifying some of the old wires so that I knew where to hook what up to, mm -hmm. uh, and then once that was done, the rest I did basically on myself. Chris made a little mounting bracket for my fuel filter. Um, but the rest I did, I basically did myself, other than the exhaust. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet man. What uh, what coilovers do you have on here? Oh, these are like a very very cheap brand. Um, it was a company that was actually in Peterborough, Ontario. They don't they don't exist anymore, but it was called Seven Hundred Five Engineering. Uh huh. Uh, Chris, I mean Mark, actually has the exact same coilovers as me. Is it a new set? Oh, like... I have no idea how old. It is. Oh, okay. No idea. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not a big BBS guy, but these are like a rare model of BBS, right? Uh, no, I wouldn't say they're rare. No, they're just no. normal 15. They're not clean right now, so forgive me for that. But that's fine. They're, uh, they're just normal 15 inch. I think they're narrow. 0, 047s, I think. Yeah, they're like 15 by 6.5 or something like that, right? Yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, they have five inch barrels, one inch lip. Yeah, six and a half. Yep. Yeah, six yep. and a half. Yeah, yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. 185, yeah. 45, 15. Yeah. Old man kangs. Old Nankangs. On the front. Look at this guy. You have a little like reverse rate going on right now, eh? Yeah. Yeah, because the oil pan sticks down so far on the VR6. So any any lower you yeah. go. And it's like if I was on air, obviously yeah. when I park it it would look nice, but like it has to be a little bit higher on the front. I like these louvers, dude. Where'd you get these? 
Oh, dude. Um, I was selling some. Yeah. I was selling some Mark One parts on Kijiji, uh -huh. and then some dude messaged me and said, "Hey, I have a bunch of Mark One parts, but wow. I'm in Ottawa." Look at that. So he had uh, BBS uh, RMs. Yeah. I think uh, he had those louvers. He had an eyebrow. He had some grills. So I drove up to Ottawa and. Uh, That's crazy, and man. Up, yeah. I've seen some parts up there too, but like I'm not crazy enough to. <laughs> I don't love my car that much, bro. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. So what are the the next plans for this thing? Uh, well, right now I have... Uh, like it? <laughs> <laughs> I know, this thing's such a looker, man. People it does just get a lot of looks, that's yeah. for sure. Mark 1s, Mark 2s, I yeah. swear. Yeah, it does. It gets a lot of head turns. It gets a lot uh, of thumbs up. I can't stop for gas without somebody like, like complimenting it. And I'm not complaining. Yeah. Uh, it's just a fact of life that you have to like... You know you're gonna take uh, like longer at the gas station because people want to talk to you, right? Yeah. Which is fine. But um. I know first world problems, eh? It's definitely a first world problem. <laughs> I'm not complaining that people want to talk about my car. Yeah. If you want to talk about it, come up. I'll talk about it. But yeah. like, yeah, it does take a little. You bit get more a lot time. of like, hey, my uncle had one of those, oh, or my so and so had one. Every single person that I know, <laughs> their family members had one of them. I know. I get that a lot too, yeah. man. But yeah, I have a. Um, I have a, a 3.6 in the garage. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I'm gonna tear it down, put some new parts on it, make sure it's good to go. Yeah. And then. So you're gonna refresh that one. Cause this one, I remember you just pulled this out of your Mark III, right? Yeah. yeah. Harold had like a Mark III GTI for the longest time. It was his beater winter car. The thing was falling apart yeah. until eventually it was like, okay, this is too sketch to drive. So he just pulls the, the motor out of it. And I was like, are you gonna do anything to it before you drop it in? No, he's just like, no, I'm just gonna drop it in just like that. I, I, what a I brave, did small things. I what a brave things. guy. <laughs> I did small things. I, I like. You I, changed the oil. <laughs> I did change, yeah. No, but I bought a lot of Eurowise parts, right? I bought yeah. the, uh, the the crack pipe, the aluminum crack pipe thermostat housing, the aluminum uh, coolant bottle. Um, I bought their small alternator kit. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do chains or anything like that. I didn't touch anything internal, I just touched external stuff. Yeah. No, it looks, it looks good, man. And obviously I was around for like, while you were do doing the swap yeah. and to see it like finished and to actually experience it, like sit in the, in the passenger seat and hear it run. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who's built a car knows that like, there's a moment in your build where you can lose motivation and then it will never get complete. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to push through that. For sure. For Especially sure. in Canada where like our, our moment is, is winter. I yeah. don't work on it in the winter because I don't have a heated garage, and then, and then well, neither I, do I. But yeah, I know, so I'm a baby, I'm a baby. Like, you oh gotta man! Come out in the spring and re-motivate yourself to like do it. Yeah. And that's tough, but you know it got done. And it got 3. done. Three point six will get done too. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good stuff. Uh,